So what's in the box, you might be asking? Well, I'll tell you what, stick with me, we'll jump into this together, and I'll share what I picked up on Black Friday with you guys. Let's go. Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. Now, on Black Friday, I did a little bit of shopping, and it's like I need another 3D printer. I don't know, I've got over a dozen of them. I lose count now. Uh, but I wanted to pick up another printer. Uh, and especially since they had some pretty good deals on Amazon, I ended up picking up this guy. Now, when we open it up and get into it, I'll explain a little bit more of my logic. So let's go ahead and open this guy up. So one of the first things inside as you open it up, you see this great foam. I love this foam uh, for Kaizen cutouts on my Ortur laser. If you don't have an Ortur laser, I highly recommend one. I'll put a link down below. Got tons of videos, and this stuff is great for Kaizen cutouts. But that's another video. So I'm going to set this aside and voila, what do we have? We have the, I think it's the Fisun Q5, your first Delta printer. Well, they have that a little bit wrong. This is actually my third Delta printer. So I've got a BQ Magic as well as a Monoprice uh, Mini uh, Delta printer. Now, typically I have, mostly what I have are Cartesian printers and I have the bigger Cartesian printers. You know, like the CR10s, the Alpha Ys, uh, the JG Aurora uh, A5, uh, and, and ones like that. And I do a lot of my big stuff on that. But one of the things that I really enjoy the Deltas for are details. Now, I also have one core Exe, the Tron Exe. The quality on that is great. The Deltas are also great for detail. Uh, but I prefer the Deltas best for the detail because of their range of motion. Now, I'm not going to get into all that in this episode, but one of the things uh, and I can share with you is I find I get far more detail out of the Deltas than I do the Cartesians, especially with the 8-bit boards. So with that being said, um, I was perusing Amazon on Black Friday. They had this for around 200 bucks. I ended up picking it up. It's got a 200 by 200 build which works well for me. My BQ Magic and my Monoprice Mini uh, are all around about 120 uh, millimeters of build area. So this is substantially bigger. They did have a 266, I think, you know, 266 by 266 version for a little short about, I think, 100 bucks more. But again, if I'm going that big, usually detail does not matter to me. It's more of a fixture or something. Most of my smaller parts, I need to be mechanically accurate. And that's, again, why I picked this guy up. So basically, it's a good fit between the Monoprice Mini and my larger 8-inch by 8-inch Cartesian printers. And I, on the 300 by 300s, I typically print the larger structure items. So hopefully, this will be a good fit. Uh, also, it says it's the first Delta, so it's supposed to be simple to set up, which is great. The reviews were pretty good online. Some complained about the packaging so far. Again, just, you know, opening it up as you've seen. Uh, seems to be okay. It comes uh, somewhat disassembled, if you will. And uh, as you can see, the units are sort of like this, and we have to assemble them. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get this all out of the box, laid out here. Let's see what we have to work with, and then we're going to jump back into it. Okay, so I don't have enough area to really lay out everything. So I've got the big things laid out here, and I've got one of the uprights over here laid out so you can see it. Here's the build area, so I'm really happy with that. It looks like a, uh, one of these uh, black diamond type textured glass bases. Uh, it is a heated uh, base, as you can see here. Looks pretty nice. Um, now, one of the things you can see, there, there's a fair number of parts, and I left all the littler parts in the bag over here, and you can see the arms. Now, if you're new to this and it's your first Delta printer and you've built other kits, then I think it's okay, so long as you understand how a Delta works. Um, now, again, looking at this, if I was all brand new to this, I never built a 3D printer before, this could be a little bit intimidating uh, because of the pieces and also the oddness of how a Delta goes together. Also, it has a little bit of a unique auto-leveling system, unlike the uh, Monoprice Mini uh, Delta. So it's got this little head that fits on here. So it's more like sort of the BQ Magic, but I assume that kind of stays on from what I saw in the pictures. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and assemble this. Um, I don't think I'm going to do a detailed assembly video. This has been out on the internet for a while. And I know a lot of other guys have done assembly videos. So I'm going to go ahead, put it together. I'll note anything kind of unique about the assembly if you're interested. But the biggest thing in this video, I kind of want to cover why did I buy this and why you might want to buy it and what you should expect in getting this. So again, my focus with this has been higher quality or detailed parts. Now the pieces, I've also got SLA printers too, but the time in processing SLA pieces sometimes uh, is burdensome. And so I kind of like the idea, you design it, you set this to print, you walk away, you pop it off, you don't have to worry about the cleaning, the curing. So to me, this is a little bit middle of the road uh, between higher quality FDM and SLA. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead, put this together, and we'll come back and we'll talk about it after I get it together. Wish me luck. Okay, so pretty much I've got most of this together, but one of the things I wanted to do is kind of share with you this setting the power on this unit. So this is kind of really wonky the way that this is. Now I've removed the control board. You can see the control board here if I get it in frame. Uh, and then here's the power supply. Now, you shouldn't have to do this, but I wanted to do this to kind of demonstrate where this switch is because it is hard to find. Now, you can see here's where it's got the uh, 230 or 115, so 110 or 220. And the switch is buried in here. It's a tiny little switch. But what will happen is it, it is on the underside of the top and you have to kind of fish through the hexagon holes on the other side if you want to change it. It's really not clear and the hexagons really don't line up. So for example, in my case, I couldn't really easily get at it through the meshing underneath, which is what the intention is. So I actually just undid it. I had opened this up to kind of see what was in here, what kind of board and etc. And uh, so anyways, when you get this, it does come set for 220. You need to change it to 110 or 115 as it says here. And again, there's a switch and there's a little bit of an opening. So if you don't want to take this apart like this, which I do not suggest by the way, if you can get to it underneath, then again, it's your only option, but you have to flip that switch. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the switch and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk a little bit more about the build and I'm going to give you a few more tips. Okay, so here we are. We've got the unit assembled. Now, a couple build tips I do want to share. Now, each one of these legs, even though they look the same, are labeled X, Y, and Z. Make sure you match them to the wires which come out of the housing here at the top. It's important. Also, they're referring to the central unit as the effector. And one of the pieces, keep in mind, it seems that they imply everything is from the logo forward. So, you know, left and obviously right. So the bump, as they reference it, appears to be here where the uh, auto leveling attachment comes on. Now, one of the things, the wires for the auto leveling attachment, they indicate do go through these rods and you remove it, obviously, when you're done with this. So again, pretty straightforward. The other thing I'd recommend is uh, going through, making sure all the screws are tight, uh, you know, because typically that's one of the big problems with this. Now, uh, the bolts on the gimbals that go into the effector, they do have what appears to be a little bit of blue Loctite on them. So that's good. So when you screw them in, just make sure you're snug. Uh, don't over tighten these. I think they would break very easily. I think this is also kind of one of the shortfalls of this, but at the price I can't complain, is the gimbals are a little bit cheaper. I am going to see if I cannot buy another set of these arms to have them laying around, because I think this is actually a good printer for the money. And these do wear out. On my BQ Magic, I am now starting to have some problems with some of the gimbals, and I really wish I would have uh, you know, picked up some more to replace them. I don't know, maybe I can still get them, don't know yet. But uh, it went together pretty good. There's a couple screws that go into the top. I already explained a bit about the power supply underneath. That's a little bit wanky. Uh, again, you kind of snip the PTFE tube uh, to the uh, cable with some zip ties. No big deal there. I am going to replace this in the very, very near future with a Capricorn tube, even though I'm going to predominantly use this for PLA because the Capricorn tube just slides a lot better and you have a lot less headaches. It's a few bucks more, but well worth it. 
The other cable seems to hang here. I think I'm going to come up with something for this in the near future. It's not the most attractive, but it is does work. I'm going to probably do a cable chain that goes up here just to make it more attractive. We'll see how that goes. But outside of that, it's ready to print. So with this, hopefully you found it interesting. If you've got any questions, hit me up in the comments below. If you have one of these and you've done some mods, uh, please also let me know. I think one of the things I am going to do is a base for this. I don't like how this sits on the countertop. I mean, it's not horrible, it's functional, but I think I can make that better. And I think there's a couple other pieces I could probably do a little bit better with that I'll work on in the near future. So if you found this interesting, give it a big thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe over there, Swag Shop up there, and we'll catch you in the next video, which we're going to do something cool. And I got to promise you, there's some cool stuff coming. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.